Let's go look at the proof of ratio test um, of why it makes sense. Um, the first case says that if you look at the ratio of two successive terms at any point down the line, and that's less than one, then the series will absolutely converge, or in other words, also implied convergence. If that ratio is bigger than one, it diverges, and if we end up with one, then we can't make a conclusion. So let's go look at this case by case and focus on case one. So in case one, we pretty much know that the limit of a sub n plus one over a sub n, an absolute value, is always going to be less than one, and that that limit actually goes to L. Now, what does that mean? Let's think of what the limit definition says. It says that if this guy's limit is equal to L, after some point, I'm going to get as close as I possibly want to L. So basically, all of this guy says that eventually, I will be within epsilon of L. I can get as close as I possibly want to L, and I can stay within an epsilon strip of it. So basically, as n goes to infinity, this guy, this ratio, is always going to be within epsilon of L. So if I want to get to L, all the terms will eventually, the ratio will go to L. And how close do I want to get to it with an epsilon of it? And what is epsilon? That will be given to you. And depending on how close you want to be, you're going to have to go out farther in your n values. So eventually down the line, all these guys, a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, will have to be in this little strip. They can't go past that. So we'll say after some capital L, or capital N, I'm sorry, a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is going to be stuck in this little strip with an epsilon of it. We know L is going to be less than 1 for case 1. So let's put 0 here and let's put 1 there. So now in other words, we'll say L plus epsilon is somewhere in between L and 1. And we can do that because if it's not, we'll just make N be bigger so that we can get even closer to L. So Eventually, after some L, after some N, all my points will be here, of course, because they're less than 1, they're going to stay away from 1. Now, let's call this guy some R. So, I'm going to call L plus epsilon some R value. And we can say that for N big enough, meaning after capital N, all these guys... are going to be less than R. So pick, pick a little window, and after that capital N, the ratio is always going to be less than R. And why? Again, because the limit is L. Now, if that's the case, this implies that A sub N plus 1 is going to be less than R A sub N. I just multiply the A sub N over to the right side. Now, what about the ratio of a sub n plus 2 over a sub n plus 1? Well, by the nature of the limit definition, those guys too, their ratio has to be less than r because they're around, they're huddling around this limit value of l. That implies that a sub n plus 2 has to be less than r a sub n plus 1 beyond that capital N that I've walked off far enough to. But, this guy right here can be replaced with its equivalent that it is less than here. So I can say, if I want, that this guy is less than that guy, and hence a sub n plus 2 is really less than r times r, r squared, a sub n. Well then, okay, so what about a sub n plus 3 over a sub n plus 2? What about their ratio? Well, again, by the nature of the limit and the strip, they're all stuck around after that big n. That, those guys, their ratio has to be less than r as well. And that leads us to a similar analysis up here that happened. So a sub n plus 3 is less than the right side. And then again, this guy we can replace with what happened here this guy is going to be less than this guy. So we end up with a sub n plus 3 is actually going to be less than 
r cubed times a sub n. Okay, now let's go look at the sum of the series from that point on, from that big M that we chose. Let's go add up all these terms. a sub n, let's say, plus 1. So now I'm adding up all the terms of the series, starting from that capital N, where everybody huddled around L. All of these guys added will be less than these guys that we developed up here. So the first term will be less than that. The second term will be less than that. The third term will be less than that. So I'm going to go replace all of them with what they are actually less than. So we have this guy. So this guy is less than this piece, as we showed up there. This guy is less than this piece as we developed up here. This guy is less than this piece as we developed over here. And so all the terms keep adding up forever and ever, and forever and ever on this side, and all these guys will always be less than these guys on the right side. Now notice what we have on the right side. We have, it looks like a geometric series. Because the first guy is just r, a sub n, an absolute value, and to get to the next guy we multiplied by r, to get to the next guy, we multiplied by r, and this process will continue. And since r, way all the way up here, since r was less than 1, because the limit was less than 1, this guy actually converges. In fact, we even know what it converges to. The sum will go to the first guy. We don't really need this, but if we wanted to, 1 minus r, the common ratio. So we know that this guy on the right side definitely converges because it's a geometric series less than 1. Therefore, since all these, the series terms, all these guys happen to be less than it, then by a comparison, these guys added up converge also. So if I'm looking at this series, which started for me from capital N plus 1 all the way to infinity, because I'm looking at A sub N plus 1 starting at capital N plus 1 all the way to infinity, by comparison test, since these guys converged and they were geometric with all less than 1, the sum of these guys all the way forever and ever also converges. In fact, it converges absolutely because we were looking at it in absolute value form. Now I started at the n plus first term, but who cares? Remember, a finite number of terms don't affect convergence or divergence. I can think of it as, well, I stripped out the first n terms. I looked at them by themselves. And then I looked at all the terms from capital N plus 1 on, and they converged. And this is just going to be a number anyway. I'm adding up a finite number of terms. So overall, the whole series from the beginning on, these guys together imply that the whole series converges. So case 1, recap, said that if the limit is L, they all huddle around L, they're all going to be less than 1, therefore we can compare them to this geometric series with R less than 1 that converges, and by the comparison test, these guys will have to converge, and the entire series has to converge. That is case 1. Now let's go see what case 2 was indicating. Case 2 was saying that if the limit is bigger than 1, then this whole series diverges. So let's go focus on case 2 now. Okay, this case should be quicker because now it goes to L, and this L is going to be bigger than 1. So let's go just look at the little strip around the limit L again. So again, eventually this ratio for some capital N and beyond is going to be trapped in this strip. So all the terms... Actually, the ratio, when you look at, lie in this little window. But now, that L is actually bigger than 1. So 1 must be somewhere over here. And we've got some business going on and huddling around L greater than 1. If I want, I can now pick my R to be this guy. I don't really have to do too much analysis. I know that this ratio is going to be beyond 1. So I can pick this to be R if I want to. So I can say eventually all these, the ratio of the terms, huddle around 
L get closer and closer around L and will be bigger than this value R, which is going to be bigger than 1 because they're all to the right of 1. And this happens from some n on. Again, pick n big enough and it'll eventually happen where they're going to get closer and closer around L and they're going to be beyond 1. And if that's the case, then I have m sub a sub n plus 1 greater than, I can just jump and say a sub n plus 1 is greater than a sub n in absolute value. Well, what does this mean? This means that eventually all the terms, when you go to the next guy, the next guy is going to be bigger than the previous guy. So how could the terms be going to zero and give us hope for convergence? They can't. So the terms are not going, the terms of the series eventually are not going to zero and they keep getting bigger and bigger in absolute value. In other words, from that point n on, a sub n diverges, and it does so by the divergence test because the limit of the terms don't go to zero, they keep getting bigger and bigger. And again, it doesn't matter what happened to the finite number of terms prior to this because it doesn't affect convergence and divergence. So we'll say the entire series diverges because from 1 to, I should say this from technically, from n plus 1 on because that's where we analyzed it from, we can say that the first n terms are just a finite number and tacking that on to a divergent series doesn't really change um, the answer. So the whole thing diverges. Again, we started with looking at the ratio of the limits. They happen to be bigger than 1. That led us to believe that each successive, two successive terms we look at, the next guy is going to be bigger than the previous guy. That means they don't go to 0, so the whole thing diverges. Okay, let's go quickly look at the last case, which was the inconclusive case. So if the limit goes to 1, then you can't really use the ratio test. What's the deal there? Okay, so we get the limit to be 1, it's inconclusive. Let's look at a couple of examples and see what that means. Let's analyze the harmonic series, which we know diverges, using the ratio test. We look at the limit of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Everything is positive anyway, so I'll get rid of the absolute values and simplify. So now we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1, which we know they have the same degree. Dividing everybody by n gives us 1. Now let's go analyze another one. Now we're going to do this with the ratio test, which we know is a p-series with p equals 2 and convergent. Let's look at the limit of um, n going to infinity of the two terms and simplify. So now we got multiply by the reciprocal, clean up the denominator, multiply it out, and we have n squared over another thing with n squares, dividing everybody by n squares. Of course, we know the limit of this goes to 1 as well. So what happened here? We used the ratio test for something that was divergent, the harmonic series, and the limit went to 1. And then we used the ratio test for something that was convergent because this was a p series with p equals 2. So the harmonic series was divergent, we got a 1. The p series was convergent and we still got a 1. Therefore case 3 doesn't really shed any light because either thing could be happening and you wouldn't know. So when you get the, ratio, the limit of the ratios being equal to 1, and conclusive you got to go apply some other test.